Hey everybody, my name is Michael Levan, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy a container image with Aptable. Now, Aptable is a platform as a service or PaaS product, which I really enjoy taking a look at, playing around with, seeing all the different security features, seeing how easy it was to deploy. It actually was pretty straightforward to get load balancer endpoints, to actually deploy a containerized application, all that good stuff. And I also like that, again, the underlying infrastructure, you don't have to manage, you simply just have to deploy your application and you're good to go. So if you're not familiar with PaaS or platform as a service, essentially the gist is you don't have to manage the underlying components. So we're talking networking, we're talking creating load balancers, we're talking VMs, we're talking the clusters themselves. You literally just take code and deploy it. Now, there are a few different ways that you can use it and you'll see in the video coming up from a demo perspective that you can just go ahead and deploy some like node and some Ruby on rail examples, or you can actually take a full blown containerized application and deploy it via the CLI. So with that, let's go ahead and dive right into the demo and we'll see how this whole thing works. When you get to the website, the first thing that you're gonna notice is outside of you know product information, pricing, et cetera, et cetera, there's gonna be a sign up and a logon page. So if you click sign up, you're gonna get 30, tw either 29 or 30 days for free. Now I've already signed up, actually, <laughs> never mind. it's right here, 30 day free trial. Now I've already signed up, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click login, and then I'm gonna sign in here. I'm gonna click the login button. And then the first thing that you're gonna see outside of the information around the free trial is your environment. Okay, so this is an environment that's set up by default. And if you wanted to, you could create your own environment, you could name it, decide whether it's shared tenancy or dedicated tenancy, and then you can select the stack here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just use the default here. Now we have a couple of different pieces of information, security and compliance, my settings, and then the option to deploy code, okay? Now, before we deploy any code, what I wanna do is I wanna go back to the environments tab and I wanna click on create an app, all right? And I'm just gonna name this container test. Click save. Okay, and as we can see, we have the starting of an app, okay? And we're gonna have a few different pieces of information here that we can utilize. Number one, we could deprovision, as in delete the app completely if we wanted to. But the first thing that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to add in an SSH key. So I'm gonna click add an SSH key. It's gonna ask me to re-enter my credentials. And then I'm gonna add in an SSH key here. So I'm gonna say Mike SSH key. All right, and I'm gonna paste in my public SSH key and I'm gonna click save new SSH key. All right, so I've done that. Now, if I refresh here, we'll now see that it is done, okay? And then step two is going to be figuring out what project we wanna deploy. So we have a Node.js project we can deploy, Ruby on Rails, Django, and Laravel. Or to deploy your existing app, you can check out the app deployment guide to uh, deploy any type of custom code base, okay? And then last but certainly not least, you can bring down the template and then go ahead and deploy it. But what I'm interested in here is, I am interested in direct Docker image deploy, okay? So if we take a look at this documentation, this is going to tell us how we can deploy a Docker image to our environment. and. The way that we would actually do it in this case is with the CLI. All right, so what I wanna do here is I want to install the CLI, and there are a few different ways that I can do that. The way that I'm gonna do it is with Brew because I'm on a Mac. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up VS Code and then we're gonna go ahead and use a terminal there and do a deployment. Let's go ahead and run this command here. And then once this is deployed, or installed rather, we're going to have to log in to our environment. All right, so now let's run the login commands here. And it's gonna ask for our email and our password. All right, so email and password. All right, and as you can see, the token expires every seven days. If you want to utilize the lifetime subcommand, you can, that way it doesn't change, or that way it doesn't expire and you have to re-enter it. But from a security perspective, 
probably don't want to turn that on to be honest. Alrighty, so we are now officially good to go. Heading back to the documentation here, what I want to do is I want to copy the deploy commands here and then I'm going to open up a new text file and I'm going to paste it in, right? So we're going to have to edit this and we're going to pass in a few different pieces of information, right? Now the first is going to be the Docker image that we want to deploy. So let's go ahead and run nginx latest. And then we're going to have to pass in our app name and our app name is container test. So if we just go ahead and run the help sub command here, we can go ahead and run the apps command. And then as we can see under our apps list, it says container test. So we know this is accurate here. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this command. I'm going to paste it in my terminal and I'm going to go ahead and run it. And we're going to see some output here. We're going to see it's deploying the application. We can see that it's pulling down the Nginx container image if it doesn't already exist. Right, and now it's waiting for the container to start. All right, and as we can see, the app was deployed successfully. And I like the fact that by default, we have some verbose output here. So we're getting a lot of info, even though it's, you know, no errors or no warnings or anything like that. It's telling us from start to finish how the application deployment looks. So now what I wanna do is I wanna head back here and I want to refresh this page. Okay, so now at this point, if I zoom in here, I can now see that this is a little bit different. I can see container test, I can see the Docker image used last deployed because before it said that nothing was deployed, right? So now we have a couple of different pieces of information here. First things first, we have some service information around the memory, around the CPU, around the container count, and then the profile. And as we can see here, what's really cool is it's showing us our estimated cost. So we have some cost optimization in here, which is ideal. Viewing the metrics here, we can see memory usage based on past hour, past day. We can see some scale information here. So we could actually scale it up right here if we wanted to. And then it'll also tell us the estimated cost information. So let's say we wanted to scale this thing up. We're gonna beef it up to two gigs here. It's gonna tell us it's gonna be 233 a month. I'm gonna click scale service. Now we could scale this up, but based on the plan, as you can see, when I do try, I get an error here because of my current plan because I'm on a trial. But if you're not on a trial, you could of course go ahead and scale that up. Next, we have some endpoint information. So the container port, the endpoint type, whether it's external or internal, and then some ALB information if we need some load balancing, all right? And then we could actually go ahead and save that if we wanted to. And then now we can see that it's creating this endpoint. So again, from a PaaS, a platform as a service perspective, this is really cool because it's doing all of the heavy lifting underneath the hood. There's not much we have to do outside of actually deploying the application, which Platform as a service makes sense. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll definitely see some products that are specified as platform as a service, but there's still some infrastructure piece you have to do underneath the hood. In this case, we actually don't, it's pretty solid. All right, we can see some activity information and this activity information is gonna be based on the deployments. And then once we deprovision, we might be able to see that in here as well. We can also download logs, share them with security teams if we need to. And from a security perspective, this is something that you don't see all that much out of the box with platform as a service products. There is a security scanner here and then there's a vulnerability report. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give this a few minutes to actually scan the image. But I do like the fact that again, out of the box, we have the ability to scan and we don't have to do anything. We don't have to install any third party tools, nothing. It's actually doing it for us again, out of the box and giving us that vulnerability report. So security obviously makes sense here and everybody should use it. So it does make sense to have it directly in the product. And then last but certainly not least, we could deprovision our container. But before we do that, 
I do want to wait until the load balancer is provisioned and the vulnerability report is done because I want to take a look at those two things before we go ahead and deprovision. So we can see here under endpoints that the host name for the load balancer is now active. So if I go ahead and if I open up a new web browser, boom, we can see our application. It's running and good to go. Now all we're waiting for is just the security scan here. And we can see here after a few minutes that the security scan did complete. Luckily, my Docker image has no vulnerabilities. And if we wanted to, we could rerun the report. But I really do, you know, again, like I said before, I really do love this feature because out of the box, I like the ability to do any type of scanning. That way I can send it to, you know, the security team to ensure that, we can put some type of ticket in to go ahead and fix this bug for any of our internal container images. And with that, that's how we can get started deploying our containerized applications. Thank you so much for watching.